Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the fourth chapter of grade 9. Structure of the interior of earth. In this chapter, we are going to explore in detail about the interior structure of earth and the methods used to explore the interior. Humans have always been trying to explore the world beyond the sky and beneath the ground. Exploring the space above us is an easier task when compared to exploring the interior of our earth for a simple reason that when we go outside our atmosphere we have to survive in absence of oxygen and pressure while when we move in the interior we have to withstand unbearable pressure and temperature despite such advancement in science and technology we have not been able to find a way to do so. The question that arises here is that how deep have humans reached inside the earth and how far have humans reached outside in the space? The answer is quite interesting. Humans have reached millions of kilometers far in the space but only 16 kilometers inside the earth that too through a small drilling pipe another fascinating point is that we are capable of seeing much beyond the farthest point we have reached in space but when it comes to peeping inside the earth we haven't seen anything substantial enough to mention. In this chapter, we will look into the interior structure of earth and methods used to explore the interior. This chapter has been divided into four topics. Seismic waves, finding the thickness of earth's layers, layers of the earth, Earth's magnetism. This is the first session of the chapter. In this session, we are going to learn in detail about seismic waves. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Develop understanding about the processes that caused the differentiation of the Earth develop awareness about the nature and uses of seismic waves, acquire knowledge about seismic waves, list four different kinds of seismic waves, compare and contrast between P waves and S waves. Before we begin our exploration about seismic waves, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same. Seismic waves travel only on and over the surface of the solid earth's crust. Seismic waves can pass through all mediums. There are only one kind of seismic waves produced during earthquake. Seismic waves are produced only during earthquakes. All these are myths. Let's explore the facts. As we all know, universe was formed through the Big Bang and our solar system was formed much later than that due to a solar nebula. Our Earth was not as big as what it is at present. In fact, it was just a tiny piece of rock in the beginning. 
small particles like earth gather to form bigger ones eventually they became so large that as they collided with each other a lot of friction and heat was generated and as a result the early planets of our solar system including earth were in molten state beginning with the assumption that the primitive earth was in a molten state about 4.7 billion years ago it would follow that the following processes should have happened simultaneously within this molten earth the molten earth should have started cooling and solidifying from outside in gases should have begun to escape lighter elements and minerals should have moved towards the surface heavier elements and minerals should have sunk down towards the center the big question here is that if humans have dug only 16 kilometers deep inside the earth which is more than 6000 kilometer deep that is its radius then how do we know what the earth's interior is like looking at the tremendous amount of heat and pressure inside the earth it is not possible for humans with present technology to go more than few kilometers deep inside the earth so how do we study the mysteries of the interior of the earth geologists use seismic waves to detect and describe what lies beneath our feet in the earth's interior the outcome is not very clear but geologists make multiple experiments with seismic waves and draw conclusion through their observation of these waves during the experiments During an earthquake elastic energy stored in rocks is released and travels as vibration through the rocks outwards from the epicenter such vibrations are known as seismic waves seismic waves are a series of disturbances caused in the particles of any medium due to the propagation of energy while that is the most common manner in which seismic waves are produced they may also be produced artificially due to explosions you may have sometimes felt them on the ground even when a heavy vehicle passes by the road in any such event of a sudden release of energy by rocks four types of seismic waves are produced p waves or primary waves and s waves or secondary waves these are the body waves while love waves which is named after the british physicist augustus love and relay waves which is named after the british physicist john william relay these two are surface waves most of the information we have about the earth's interior is provided by the body waves that is p waves and s waves as they move through the body and their behavior changes as they move from one medium to another in p waves the particles vibrate back and forth along the direction of wave propagation causing a series of compression and rare fraction p waves are the fastest of all but they do not cause great destruction but they are the first ones 
to be received at a seismic recording station. Animals and reptiles can feel them well ahead of an earthquake. They can travel through all mediums. S waves or secondary waves. In secondary waves, particles vibrate up and down perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation causing a series of crests and troughs. S waves cause the ground to move up and down and hence are more destructive but they are slower to arrive at a seismic recording station compared to P waves. They are also called shear waves. They can travel through all mediums except liquids. If we compare P waves and S waves, we can see that P waves are compressional or longitudinal while S waves are shear or transverse. P waves travel in the form of compressions and rare fractions while S waves travel in the form of crests and troughs. P waves make the particles move back and forth in the direction of wave propagation whereas S waves make the particles move up and down perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. P waves move fast while S waves move slow. P waves cause less destruction while S waves cause great destruction. And finally, P waves can travel through all mediums, whereas S waves cannot travel through fluids. If you observe the animation, you will find all types of waves. The primary waves first to reach, S waves second and the surface waves the third one. Surface waves cause maximum destruction on the surface. These waves are similar to waves which are produced on water in the form of ripples. In the next session, we will focus on the methods used to find the extent of different layers of the earth. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.